Hey, Rod Riders, Keith Wheeler here, back with another video for you. Over the past few weeks, I've walked you through how to choose, set up, and optimize your Amazon ads. But based on your comments and emails I received, there's one thing that I didn't really cover when it comes to Amazon ads, and that is how to fix your Amazon ads. What do you do if you're not getting impressions? What if you're getting impressions, but you're not getting a lot of clicks? Or worse yet, what if you're getting a lot of clicks, but you're not getting any sales? So in today's video, I'm going to tell you how to fix your Amazon ads. And the good news is that all of these fixes are fairly easy to do. So with that, let's get started. To best understand this, we need to recognize the journey that a customer takes when it comes to Amazon ads. So let me share the screen real quick. Now, the first thing that a customer does is they're going to type in some kind of search term. Let's just say sci-fi books. Okay. Now, the next thing that happens is that behind the scenes, the Amazon algorithm chooses which ads to show. Once that's decided, and this is all done within milliseconds, once that's decided, then the customer sees the ads. So here's an ad. This is a brand ad. Okay. It's a sponsored right there. And then these are all sponsored individual ads. Okay. So when I see the ad, when the customer sees the ad, that is an impression. So after the customer sees the ad, hopefully they'll click on it. Now I'm not going to rack up anybody's um, ad spend. So I'm going to click on one that's not an ad. So let's just click on this book. Okay. And then hopefully they click on the ad, right? Then they're brought to the Amazon sales page for that book. So when they clicked on the ad, that's a click, right? That's where, what you end up paying for. They get to the sales page and then hopefully they click over here and they click on buy now. So that's the customer path when it comes to Amazon ads. Okay, so now that we've understand the customer's journey, the first question we need to ask is, what do I do if I have little to no impressions? So if you have little to no impressions, there are usually four causes. The first one is you just haven't given it enough time. Okay. Sometimes it takes ads one, even two weeks before they really start to catch momentum. So if it's been less than one week, I wouldn't even worry. Just, just keep an eye on it. See what kind of impressions you're getting and how many. And once you get to the one, maybe two week mark, if you haven't gotten at least a thousand impressions, then it may be one of these other reasons. The second reason is your bid may be too low. Your cost per click bid could just be too low. And that would be caused by basically your targets being too competitive. And by targets, I mean, if you're doing a keyword ad, it would be your keywords. If you're doing a product ad, it would be your products that you're targeting. Either way, they're they're too, too competitive and therefore they're too expensive. They're too hard to compete with. And so in order to compete with them, you have to up your bid. But if you can't afford to up your bid too much because of your budget, well, then the next thing you want to do is look at other targets, other targets that are still similar, but maybe less competitive. Now, using Publisher Rocket is really easy because they've got the competitive score right there. And so that will tell you, you know, how what your chances are of, of ranking for it. And so if it's not competitive, if you got a good competitive score, then that should be the same when it comes to Amazon ads. So again, find something relevant, but is maybe not as searched for, and therefore your price might be lower, your cost per click. But if you can afford it and the words that you are targeting or the products that you are targeting are really relevant to your book, well, then consider upping your bid. The third reason why you might not be getting a lot of impressions is that your targets are not relevant enough. Just remember, everything with Amazon comes down to relevancy. That's number one. And so if you're using broad keyword phrases or if you're using keyword phrases or, or products that you're targeting that are somewhat similar to your book, then you might want to consider picking targets that are more relevant. Because again, relevancy is number one. So again, go back to your keyword research that you were doing for, for that we did in that video and find Amazon ad keywords or products, depending on your type of ad, find ones that are more relevant to your book. And that can help with your cost per click. And again, if, if your book is more relevant, then your cost per click would be lower anyway. And you got a much better chance of getting impressions. And the fourth reason, and this is way more rare, but I have to do my due diligence and at least tell you it exists. And that is sometimes ads just don't take off on Amazon ads. We don't know why it could be because maybe a bunch of people put out a lot of ads all at the same time. I don't know, but sometimes Amazon ads just don't catch momentum. So again, if it's been more than two weeks and you're not seeing impressions and you, and you've got a decent cost per click and your budget is decent and, and you know that the, the targets that you're using are relevant, then you may want to just pause that ad and basically just create a new one using all the same keywords or, or whatever your targets are using the same cost per click, the same bit, like basically 
don't copy it, but do the exact same thing. And you might find that that ad picks up quicker. So again, there's, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I would say out of my, you know, on average, out of every 50 ads I run, maybe one or two fall into that category. So like I said, very, very rare, but it is something that sometimes happens. So if you've gone through the the other three things I've talked about, you've given it enough time, you've checked it, made sure that you're not, that your bids aren't too low or that your targets aren't too competitive or whatever, and that you've made sure that your targets that you're using are relevant and you're still not getting impressions, then you might want to consider just pausing that one and creating the exact same one all over again and see if that one picks up better. The second question is, what do I do if I have impressions, but little to no clicks? So you've got hundreds, thousands of impressions, right? And nobody's clicking. People are seeing it, but they're not clicking. So what do you do? Now, there's really only three main causes of this. And again, they're all fairly easy to fix. The first one is, again, when we're going through the customer journey, you know, they're seeing the ad, but it's just not stopping the scroll. It's not catching their attention. Your cover, or if you're doing a video, your video is not stopping the scroll. That's the number one thing because nobody has patience anymore. Nobody has, you know, time to, to look slowly on a page. They're looking for something. They've done a search. They're looking for something. They're not going to stop and look at everything. They don't understand that, you know, that this is a sponsored ad and this is that. They don't care. They want to get what they came for. And so in order for you to get them to click, you need to get them to stop. And so that's one reason why I really think if you have access to, to video ads, video ads is a great way to do it because videos just, just uh, stop the scroll better than, than images do. But if you don't, if you're not doing a video ad or you can't do a video ad, your book cover, your book cover needs to stop the scroll. It needs to fit into your niche, but also stand out. So it needs to fit in the niche where it doesn't look odd, like it doesn't belong but it needs to stand out. It needs to pop. It really needs to grab their attention. The number one cause for for having a lot of impressions, but no clicks is that your cover, your video, basically your ad is not stopping the scroll. So what do you do to fix that? Uh, you, you come, you know, try to get a better cover done. You try to get a more enticing video, whatever you need to get them to stop that scroll. The second cause for getting impressions, but no clicks or little clicks is the copy text, if you have copy text, where basically it's got the ad and then it just you know gives a little blurb, it's not enticing the customer to click. You know, it doesn't sound relevant to them or you're not pulling on their emotions. People buy based on emotion. And I don't necessarily mean it's got to make them cry, but it could get them excited. It could get them intrigued, whatever. Something that makes them, again, stop the scroll and say, ooh, I want to learn more, okay? And that comes down to your cover, again, stops the scroll, and then your copy text, if that type of ad has copy text, your copy text is job is to entice the customer, get them to say, hey, I want to learn more. And so what do you do to fix that? Well, if you if you can put copy text on your ad, you know, you'll you'll have an option to standard or custom. If you have that option, never go with standard because standard means they're not going to put copy text on there. So if you have the option to put custom copy text, do it. You have like 150 characters and you want to write something that's going to get their attention, something that's going to entice them and make them want to learn more about your book. And then the third thing, you know, when they see your, if they, if you got them to stop and they're reading your copy text and they still don't click, it could be that your price is too high or your price is too low. You know, people on Amazon are not necessarily, you know, bargain hunters. They're, they're not, people that are going to, you know, they're, they're not there to get rock bottom prices. They're there to get products from a known entity, Amazon, that they know, like, and trust. And so if your price is too low, they may think that the quality is lower and therefore they won't click. So make sure that you've got a price that's not too high and not too low. So somewhere in the middle of what the average uh, books in that niche are, somewhere around there. Also, kind of a side note of this is maybe your price might be a little odd. You know, a few months back, KDP upped the pricing of, of publishing print books. Because of that, you had the option to, you know, just adjust all of your books pricing, or you could go in there and do it manually. 
The problem is, is if you pick that button, maybe you had a lot of books published or you just didn't have the time to, to go in and change your prices, the prices end up looking kind of odd. So you might have a book that's $9.73. That just looks odd to the average person and it could be enough to make them not interested, to make them question it. Again, people don't have a lot of time. You know, they don't have a lot of patience. And so you don't want them to question anything. So make sure that your book start, you know, ends in like, you know, something 95, 97, 99, things that people are, are used to when it comes to pricing. So again, those are the three main reasons why you might be getting a lot of impressions, but no clicks. Now we're going to talk about the third question in a second, which comes to getting a lot of clicks, but no sales. But first, if you've enjoyed this so far, make sure that you give that thumbs up a smashy smashy. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and clicking that bell notification so you get alerted every time I put out new videos, just like this one. So now for question number three, what do I do if I have a lot of clicks that I'm paying for, but no sales? Well, this one is easy. And 95% of the time, the cause for this comes down to one thing, and that is your book description. Your book description's job is to seal the deal. It's to get them to click. And I've got videos where I show you how to write a good book description, but what it comes down to is every single line in that book description's job is to do one of two things, to either entice them to keep reading or hopefully to click that buy button. That's it, that's your book description's job. So if you've got a lot of clicks and you don't have a lot of sales or you have no sales, what they saw when they click, they go to your sales page. And so they already seen your cover, they've already seen your price. So you know, it's probably not that. It's that book description 95% of the time. It could be too long. It could be too short. It could be too boring. Maybe you didn't reiterate what the ad copy says. I've seen this happen where the ad copy, the way it's worded, makes it sound like the book is one type of book. And then when they get to your book description, they find out because there's more, more to read about. They find out, oh, wait, that's not what I thought it was. So you need to make sure that they, that they line up maybe the book description doesn't speak to them. It, again, it doesn't entice them to either read the next line or click buy now. And maybe there's no strong call, you know, call to action at the end. Again, I've got a video where I show you how to do book description, but also AI is a great way to get a book description done. Uh, you can use uh, on Dibley Create, they've got Kip. Kip is a great way to, to write a book description, or you can just go to, simply go to ChatGPT or any other text-based artificial intelligence AI generator and and have them write you a book description now i might do a video in the future on how to write a book description using ai but i will tell you don't worry about it being ai generated because when kdp asks if your book is ai generated it's talking about the content it's talking about the interior and it's talking about the cover it's not talking about the book description again 95 percent of the time if you have a lot of clicks that you're paying for and you don't have a lot of sales it's because of your book description what about the other 5% of the time? The other 5% of the time, your interior threw them off. Your interior doesn't look, it doesn't look like what they expected. It doesn't look good, whatever. You know, on Amazon, they can use the, the look inside feature or there might be a button that says, you know, sample, whatever. They can see some of your interior. And so if it's a written book and your interior is left justified or centered and it's not justified, you know, Justify just looks better on the screen, looks better on the page. It could be jarring enough to for them not to not to actually click buy now. Or if it's a no content, low content book, then maybe it, it doesn't, the interior doesn't speak to them. Or if they look at it and they see that, you know, it's riddled with grammar errors or it's riddled with punctuation errors, whatever. About 5% of the time, the interior is what's going to get people to not buy. But again, 95% of the time, it's going to be your book description. And so again, the good thing is, is that all of these reasons, all of these causes for, for not getting a lot of impressions, for not for getting impressions, but not a lot of clicks, for getting a lot of clicks, but not getting a lot of sales. All of the fixes for this are fairly easy to do and can most of the time be done, except for maybe getting a good cover. Most of them can be done in an afternoon. So if you have any other questions when it comes to running Amazon ads or or you've got a situation where you've got a lot of whatever and not a lot of whatever, let me know down in the comments if I haven't already answered it. And I'll look at each and every one of those and I'll respond to all the comments that I get. Now, one of the last things we talked about was book descriptions. Did you know you can actually put bullet points in your book descriptions and not just regular bullet points, but emojis and things like that. If you didn't know that, check out this video right here. 
that I did a few years ago where I show you how to actually include emojis into your book descriptions to really make them pop. Now, if you've already seen that video, or maybe that's not your issue, you know your book description is solid. YouTube says that this video right here is something you should check out. So I'll catch you inside one of these videos. And remember to write right.